So like we did before, we could do we could do a mixture of procedural stuff and just eyeballing it. Like for example, again, we want these to span the entire thing here. So I can just say, you know, I don't know how how big does it take to sh guarantee that it goes through. I don't know. Well, apparently, certainly by eighty, they've completely started outside of it and ended outside of it. They've cut all the way through. And as far as the height goes, like I can probably just guess that it's, like this is fine and just stick with this. You could also just be fancy if you wanted to. You could say, well, uh, what was the? How much did we extrude these guys before when we did this? I can just copy that from before, just paste it here even, and just say, boom. So now it's also procedurally figuring out how tall these need to be. So, you know, it's a mixture of however you want to do it. Uh, we can still do like this here. So now it has a lot of columns based on how big it is. And now it has a lot of rows, which will have to be an absolute value again because of the negative thing here. We'll say, actually, that should probably just be an absolute value in the first place. Kind of weird making the size of a, a grid be negative. So there we go. 1830, 1830. We're going to want to have more detail. The Boolean can handle quite a bit of detail, so let's just bump it up to double the resolution. Very good. And now we've got a whole bunch of cutting planes that we can play with. Of course, if we just jump right to the end, um, I'll just actually just copy this Boolean here. If we cut right to the end, we can just say paste. Oop, get something weird there. I'm going to say pay, or cut that new thing with all these planes. And as we know, it'll do it. It will get uh, our green lines here when we're in the manipulator mode here on the left. You can see all of the stuff there. Assemble will create our new names for us, just so we don't have to make the connectivity ourselves and then make our own names because we don't really care what they're called quite yet. But it's good enough to see our exploded view. And there you go. Same issue. Uh, we have a new B inside A. Because we still, because I copied and pasted from before, still B inside A. We can use the normal again and say, hey, only do this on B inside A. And we have our normals on the inside. So now all we need to do is, you know, perturb or noise up the inside or these planes here. So we can just grab one of them from before. We should just keep one on, on tap somewhere. So here's our the one that we used from before. So I'm going to grab that one, put it here. It's already doing the cut again for us because I have it templated still. And we can already look down here. Unfortunately, there's our normals error again. I'm just going to go into flat shaded now to avoid that for the time being. And you can see we're starting to get something interesting coming together. I'm going to go in here and just say, let's call, let's go in here, not view the re end result quite yet of the actual full cut. Let's say sparse convolution's good. Maybe I won't have it do this thing anymore. Maybe we'll just have it all be like 0.1 just to kind of meet somewhere in the middle. So now I kind of have like a rocky inside going on here. Maybe it should be more extreme though, something like that. So now that looks cool. And uh, and now what does that look like? That'll look cool, I bet. Boop, 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 boop. So now we've got something really cool. We can see we're already getting a few small pieces because it's, it's entirely dependent on now the intersections of these guys. Now we're going to have little pockets here and there, as you can see. little. There's big swaths of space, there's little pockets of space, and especially as we add noise to it, we're gonna get um, some very small pieces. Now we'll deal with some of those small pieces later on, but we'll keep doing this for now.